Subterra Mundus is a giant hidden cave system populated by prehistoric flora and fauna. Several entrances near Australia, Africa, Asia, Europe and South America have allowed animals from the early Jurassic, early and end Cretaceous, Miocene, Pliocene and Holocene epochs to find their way into this hidden world. Once there, they diversified into new families and species. Subterramundus is a realm ruled by tyrannosaurs, but wherever the giant hunters go, scavengers and opportunists are sure to follow. Under the rule of the giant tyrants, the abelisaurs of Subterramundus fill scavenger niches, although most are still able to tackle large prey. The origin of Subterramundian abelisaurs is difficult to determine, although it is likely that their ancestors came from Patagonia. Whatever their origin, the new abelisaurs are quite diverse, with a range of predators, scavengers and opportunists. Gorgotaurus is a common pursuit hunter of Subterramundus open forests. These theropods are notable for their elongated horns, which serve a display purpose. Bright ultraviolet colors and patterns invisible to our eyes help the abelisaur display health and fitness. Abelisaurid courtship is not as complicated as it is for tyrannosaurs, usually involving one or more males presenting themselves to be judged by females. Having entirely lost their display arms, modern abelisaurs rely on their horns to show off their bright colors, as well as to wrestle other males for a mate. Females use their horns to wrestle other sows for optimal nesting territory. Eggs are laid in a mound of leaf litter where they are incubated by the rotting vegetation. The young stay with their mother who protects them from predators and provides food for a few months before leaving or even turning on them. Gorgotaurus, despite their brutal courtship, are not entirely solitary and often form loose groups of 10 or more individuals, which work together to tackle prey or bully other scavengers away from carrion. Some Gorgotaurs prefer to wander the forests alone or in pairs. Middle-aged males will occasionally take a younger buck under their wing and hunt with a smaller companion. Unlike tyrannosaurs, whose incredible stamina allows them to stalk their prey for hours, Gorgotaurus are specialized for speed over short distances. This allows them to ram their prey with their armored bodies to break bones or limbs, preventing escape. Should ambushing fail, the abelisaur would often give up. Gorgotaurus mainly hunts small to medium sized dinosaurs, but will often target large mammals like multituberculates and primates. Sometimes they tackle prey in pairs or groups, with one member occupying the prey's attention before the others go in for the kill. Sucodermis is a very common abelisaur from the dense forests of Subterramundus. The long, low-slung body is ideally suited for moving through dense vegetation which helps them navigate dense jungles and rainforests. Sucodermis' sense of smell, while not as good as a tyrannosaur's, is quite well developed and they can track wounded prey for several kilometers. Like their relatives, Sucodermus is covered in crocodile-like armor that gives this genus its name. These osteoderms are derived from modified scales and serve to protect them from the many blows of struggling prey as they hold on to them with their powerful jaws. The reinforced skull of Sucodermus allows it to ram smaller prey species to break bones and incapacitate them before the abelisaur goes for the kill with a bite to the face or windpipe. The jaws of Sucodermus possess a premaxillary hook similar to that of Dynamosuchus, 
which helps them firmly latch on to struggling prey. The interlocking teeth allow the ability so to quickly bite through limbs and tails. Smaller mammals and dinosaurs are sometimes bitten straight in half. The six pointed horns serve males as tools for interspecific combat and display to females, whose horns are usually a little smaller. Sucodermus also possess an elastic throat pouch, which allows them to make deep guttural calls, which can range far below the human hearing. The rattling calls are commonly heard echoing through the deep forests and jungles of Subtermundus. These vocalizations, which call to mind a crocodile or alligator bellow, are used to establish territories and announce readiness to mate. As with their relatives, Sucodermus courtship lasts just long enough for the male to show his suitability before he mates and leaves. Juvenile Sucodermus are well cared for. Mothers care for the young for up to a year before abandoning them. This high level of parental care allows juvenile Sucoderms to avoid competition with small carnivores. Although entirely carnivorous in adult years, young Sucodermus will frequently consume fruit, nuts and fungi to supplement their diet until they can hunt larger prey. The body sizes of Sucodermus vary greatly. A typical female is around 7 meters long, but some populations could exceed 9 meters, while others only reach 4 meters. This diversity in body sizes allows Sucodermus to populate different types of forests. Spectrodon is a reclusive and rarely seen hunter of the deeper jungles and rainforests. These abelisaurs are also built for traversing dense vegetation and squeezing through tight spaces to get food. Spectrodon are both scavengers and competent hunters. Their legs may be short, but they can propel the animal forward at rapid speeds, particularly over short distances, ideal for catching small animals. As they prefer smaller prey like mammals and avian theropods, Spectrodon have a less pronounced premaxillary hook than their close relative Sucodermus. Their hunting strategy is crushing smaller prey rather than gripping on and tiring out larger animals. They will also use their armored heads and shoulders to ram and incapacitate their victims and employ their feet to hold struggling prey in place. Similar to Sucodermus, male Spectrodon possess an inflatable throat pouch which amplifies their loud, high-pitched wailing calls. Should a potential mate follow these calls to their source, a male Spectrodon is ready to flaunt his ultraviolet pattern crests and perform a special dance upon a cleared forest space to show off his fitness and virility. Like Sucodermus, Spectrodon are caring parents, raising their many young for several months until they can hunt for themselves. Mothers sometimes use their elastic throat sacs to scoop up their hatchlings and transport them to safety. Not all abelisaurs in Subterramundus have continued to evolve into powerful predators. Ornatosaurus is a diminutive decorated abelisaurid with an unusual diet for a theropod, fruit. While they still eat carrion and small animals, Ornatosaurus have taken the omnivoria of their relatives to an extreme and feed primarily on fallen fruit and fungi which we find on the forest floor. For this little abelisaur, hunting is little more than an afterthought. As a result of being so low in the food chain, they have evolved a number of display features to scare off larger predators. Most notable is a pair of skin flaps on the neck, which can be raised in a parody of a frill or cobra hood. 
bright ultraviolet colors and large modified scales along with flaps also irritate most predators, although they cannot do much against terror birds, raptors and bigger abelisaurs. Male Onatosaurus also use their skin flaps to signal their health to females. Their booming calls, made by the throat sack, are a common part of the subterramundian jungle ambience. Despite, or perhaps due to, being so low in the food chain compared to other abelisaurs, Onatosaurus are surprisingly good and attentive parents. Both male and female will take turns guarding the nest and foraging for food to feed their partner and their offspring. The biggest abelisaur of Subterramundus is a wetland dweller known as Gojira Sucus. This massive abelisaur is almost able to match Sarcophaganax in size and muscle, although they lack the sharp claws and distinct jaw structure of a Tyrannosaur. What they have instead are strong neck muscles, a reinforced skull, and a jaw built for gripping. This allows them to ram and deliver bone-breaking injuries to their prey. They use their jaws to grasp prey in vulnerable areas such as the neck or face to either hold and wait for resistance to stop or to outright suffocate their victims. In water, Gojirazukas will always try to drown their prey. Gojirazukas hunt a variety of wetland fauna such as ceratopsians, vesculosaurs, sauropods, larger mammals and perhaps surprisingly other theropods and crocodiles. In addition to being an accomplished hunter, Gojirazukas is also an opportunistic scavenger, subsisting on fruit, fungi, carrion and swamp weed when fresh kills are hard to come by. This however is somewhat rare as Gojirazukas is a formidable hunter of wetland megafauna. This specialization and omnivory further aids in avoiding competition from apex tyrannosaurs. Goshirazukas are supremely adapted to their environment. Long legs help them wade through deep water and a tall tail aids in rapid swimming. Their large skull contains air chambers that allow them to hold their breath for several minutes and their greenish scales allow them to easily blend into the dense vegetation of their swampy habitat. All abelisaurs of Subterramundus are decorated in ultraviolet patterns only visible to the eyes of other archosaurs. Gojirazukas is no exception. Their crests, heads and necks contain dazzling colors and patterns entirely invisible to mammals but striking to other dinosaurs. These are used for recognition and display. Like Gorgotaurus, Female Goshirazukas are surprisingly caring parents, which spend several months teaching their young where to find food and protecting them from, from the many dangers that can befall such a small dinosaur. Such threats include animals that later become potential prey and adults of the same species. Young males especially are most often targeted by older bulls, as they are seen as competition. While the abelisaurs of Subterramundus have not seen the success and diversity of other theropods like tyrannosaurs or dromaeosaurs, they are still important members of a Subterramundian predator caste. Being able to subsist on foods other predators don't touch allows them to avoid competition with other hunters. Their continued survival in the shadows of tyrants is a testament to their adaptability and resilience in the harsh world of Subterramundus. Thanks for watching! The abelisaurs of Subterramundus might not be as dominant as the tyrannosaurs, but they still deserve attention. I wanted to get this video out sooner 
but personal business caused a great delay and it took a while to get back into the production mindset. So apologies for the wait. I hope to bring out future videos much faster and hopefully more regularly. Once again, a big thank you to my friends on Discord for helping me with various aspects of creature design and behavior. I really appreciate your help. As before, I want to give an extra special thanks to those on Discord and Instagram who have created some lovely fan art of Subterra Mundi and Fauna. I really appreciate this and I love the creativity I'm seeing so far. Many thanks again to everyone for their input and thank you for watching.